will be a description of using QuickDraw Weaving Programs version 5.2's ground unit editor for draw loom functions. When I select draw loom, I kind of have two choices for how I enter the draw loom edit. The first thing it's going to need to know is how big is the unit I'm trying to create. So if I go through and just select a block, when I ask for ground edit, it's going to create a blank template. I can then click in that. I'm using left clicks to add warp, warp and toggle warp and weft, and right clicks to fill in floating spaces. The other thing I have is here is a warped imagination structure library. And for example, I had a little 8x8 heart here. Let me select that heart. And I'm actually going to fill that into both the background buffer and the pattern buffer. Now when I go back into my blank page, when I ask for the ground edit, it now has those two defined. So what I'm actually looking at here is on the left is what is in the background buffer. On the right is what is in the pattern buffer. And notice very carefully the little traffic light inside the pattern buffer indicator. Uh, at the moment, what that's telling me is I don't have any draw controlled threads. Now, that's okay. I can go that way, but this kind of defeats the purpose of a draw loom. But if I watch that traffic indicator and the line below that, most of the screen is inactive. The only part of the screen that's actually active is the inside the red box here. And I can use a left mouse click. If I use a right left mouse click to delete that thread, you'll notice the warning sign has now gone and missing rising thread. What that says is in the pattern structure, I've, if I try and weave that, I do not, I'm not going to catch a thread in that pattern. So there's two things I'm looking for there that are critical, missing rising threads and missing falling threads. So for example, so if I have the missing rising shed, when I add that back in, that error message goes away. Let me set these three. So in those four, now I'm missing a falling shed. So I, so those are the basic warnings I need to be careful of because those basically tell me I'm not going to get a coherent structure. Now the next thing I want to do is figure out where my floating threads are. Now I could fill the inside of the heart or the outside of the heart. If we, w look, if we look at what we had in the wild imagination templates, I had the, the th interior filled heart and the exterior filled heart. And they both can create interesting patterns. But now the way to create that is if I do use a right mouse click, square by square, I can fill in which threads I want to be floating. And as I, every time I fill those in, you can see that it's automatically updated both the background buffer and the pattern buffer. And at the moment, it's very happy you know, for example, if I go through and delete some of these guys again. See, right now it's telling me it's relatively few draw controlled threads. So the caution light, you kind of need to look at what it says. And the green says it's got plenty of float, so you get a good effect. But you can go so you can even go if there were no floating threads. And it would be a perfectly valid structure. So that would be how I would create patterns and if I want to change that for example it's it's currently floating if I do a left click it will say it will toggle between rising and falling sheds but I wanted that now if for example I want to go use that if I turned off the ground editor now for example if I actually grab let me grab this pattern so I include the, the floating threads there. When I do a thread substitution, it's actually created the large heart made out of little hearts. And I'd had a little bit of fun. I'd actually gone through just more, add some red threads. The other thing I'd also done is just enable the, the virtual threads. So now when I go back to the warp, I can do the, the warp threads, and I've got a nice image on the heart. When I zoom in, I can actually see the thread textures and get the good idea what a product might, might end up looking like. When I go back to the grid, I actually still have that information that sitting there. 
The thing I could also do, for example, would just be to copy that pair if I wanted to create my own pattern structure library. If I do a right click on a copy, you'll notice the red light came on because it's the pattern background. I'm now sitting in the background buffer, which doesn't match the pattern buffer, which is fine for what I'm doing. And I want to paste that into my own, you know, I want to update that. I can now just paste those guys in and I can add to that structure library, save it under another name. So whatever you want to play with, you've got all the tools there to do that. And that is what the structure editor does. Thank you.